To find more recipes like this, and to receive some good counsel on how to live without refined sugar, please look up this title on Amazon, No Sugar Added, or How I Live Without Refined Sugar and Still Enjoy Life by the Highway Groupie. The book is available exclusively on Amazon. Hi, I'm the Highway Groupie, and today we're going to make a very simple apple sauce. Very simple apple sauce. It's connected to my apple butter, and you'll see why a little later on, because we're going to use some of this in the apple butter. And if you want that recipe, just click on the card up above. The card up above there, take you to the apple butter recipe. Now, when I was a teenager, my grandmother, with whom I lived, she would make apple sauce fresh several times a week for me. I would come home from school and she would have some fresh apple sauce for me. I would eat it with uh, tea biscuits. I just loved it. When I left home, I started buying uh, apple sauce in the jar at the store. But when I stopped eating refined sugar, it became really hard to find an apple sauce that did not have sugar added. Why would they put sugar in applesauce? I have no idea. Probably because they were using very sour apples. <laughs> but nevertheless, here is a very simple recipe that you can make at home, your own applesauce. You know exactly what goes into it and no refined sugar. So what we're starting off with is some gala apples. Gala apples add sweetness. You can also use ambrosia if you like a sweeter applesauce. Um, not sure what this one is. They said it was a gala, but it's a deformed gala. <laughs> okay, so we have seven of the gala apples. Uh, maybe eight if we count this one as two. They're about roughly three to the pound, give or take, three to the pound. So we're looking at about three pounds worth, a little less than three pounds worth of the gala apple. We also are using the Granny Smith apple. The Granny Smith really helps to add tartness and flavor. So I like a lot of these. We have eight of these large uh, Granny Smith apples. They're about half a pound each. So we're looking at a little bit over half, uh, four pounds of Granny Smith apples, if you go by weight. But again, all of these things are to your taste. If you prefer to have ambrosia, go ahead. If you like uh, different ones like Macintosh, and some of the others, go ahead and use them. One that I don't particularly like at all is the Cortland. But anyway, that's my taste, it may not be yours. So you use whatever you like. This is a combination that I particularly enjoy. Now, to go with this, we need about two thirds of a cup of water. We need a little bit of salt. This is Herbamara, which is sea salt with uh, kelp and so on for the iodine. Lots of cinnamon, and nutmeg. These are the main ingredients that I always use in my apple sauce. Now, some people like a little bit more of a bite. They'll put a bit of ginger in it. You can add a little bit of cloves or allspice to it. I don't particularly, and I won't be adding them to this recipe today. So these are the ingredients that I'm using. We're also going to use a peeler which is, it peels and cores at the same time. You can do this by hand, and I'll, up in the corner here, this corner here, you'll see uh, how to quarter, and then core the apple, peel it. it. It can be done by hand. I just find that this is faster. Maybe it wastes a little more apple, but it is faster. We will need a knife a little bit bigger than a paring knife. You'll see why in a minute. And this is just a bowl to catch whatever juice this produces. So let's start with going to the stove. And you can see that we have, over here we have the Dutch oven with the apple butter already cooking. And another pot in the back with more apple butter. So this is for the, this is for the apple sauce. We're going to start with the water. We're going to add a bit of salt. We put in a little more salt in the apple sauce than the apple butter 
because the applesauce, we're not going to be cooking it down that much. So there's our salt. I like lots of cinnamon in mine. So lots of cinnamon. Hopefully I have enough left. Getting down to the bottom of the container here. <laughs> I like my nutmeg fresh. So I grab a nut of nutmeg and put it in. So we can see I like a lot. I've used about eh, a little less than a third, maybe a quarter of the nut in my, between a quarter and a third in my apple sauce. So what we want of our apple is the mesocarp. The mesocarp is the fleshy part inside. The exocarp, that's the peel. We don't want that. We don't want the endocarp that surrounds the seeds of the, of the apple. We don't want the flower, we don't want the stem. So these things, the core with the seeds and the endocarp, flower and the stem, will be removed by this little thing here. And the peel will be removed by this little blade here. So we stick it on the tines, just a little bit, don't push it all the way in yet. Then we line it up so that the flower is dead center with the little ring here. And once it's dead center, then you push it the rest of the way back in as much as you can. Okay, and then it peels and cores at the same time. Now we're going to keep the peel because the peel we're going to use for our apple butter. Remember I said that the, this recipe is related to the apple butter recipe. So that's how it is. Now, if you have a little wee bit of peel here and that bothers you, take it off. It doesn't bother me, so I'm going to leave it. If there was a lot of peel there, I would remove it. So you notice that in the middle, by lining it up properly, we have none of the endocarp here, no seeds. We have just the mesocarp. Again, put it on the tines. Line it up, push it the rest of the way in. Let her rip. So now, a little bit of peel here. If I don't want it, I'll take it off. And again, check for the inside. There's a little bit of endocarp here. Doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, take it out. That's what the knife is for. So we have a few peels here. I'm just going to take advantage of the moment and put them over in the pot for the apple butter. Get them cooking over there. more to the apple butter. So here goes the last of the peels into the apple butter pot. Let that cook down. Forgot a little bit. And again, nice and clean coring. It goes in the apple sauce. So we finished peeling the apples. We're gonna stir them up a little bit. We're gonna take our little panel and uh, get some of the apples off the bottom. Get the top ones on the bottom. So we've shut off the, the heat to the applesauce 
And we've got it roughly to this texture. This is about the way I like it. We're going to let this stand for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to mash it with a masher. Now if you like yours smoother, I like mine a little bit lumpy. So if you like yours smoother, then you have to cook this just a little bit longer and then let it stand. But this should be good enough for me. So you notice by leaving the applesauce stand for a little while, all of the pieces that seem to be a little more solid, they've also, the heat and the steam has worked on them. And now we're going to work on them. So you just take your potato masher, or whatever you want to call this, and you run it through. Now if you're using a Teflon or an enamel pot or something like that, you may not want to do this unless you have uh, a masher that's made out of plastic. As you can see, we're using stainless steel here. And we just keep working it against the bottom. And that is about the texture that I like it, the way my grandmother used to do it. So if you taste it now, it's going to taste very sharp. So don't go by the taste at this point. Let it cool when it's cold, like refrigerator cold. Then you will find that the taste is much sweeter. The sugar of the apple comes out much more when it's cool. So there is how you make just a standard homemade applesauce. My grandmother used to make like a serving at a time. This is good for a while. So what do you do with the rest? I'm going to put some in the fridge and the rest of it I'm going to freeze. And the freezing has absolutely no bad effect on it. When you're ready for more applesauce, you pull it up out of the freezer, let it defrost, and it'll be like it was never frozen at all. So enjoy the Highway Groupies homemade applesauce. Hi. If you enjoyed what you uh, saw in that video, then please click the subscribe button um, over here. Yeah, that one. Click the subscribe button, please. And whenever I put a video up, you will find out about it. Please.